Hey everyone, it's Casey. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my five favorite baseball books. I love reading books about baseball, like nonfiction books about baseball, especially during especially during like the early spring, kind of kind of getting me out of winter time and getting more into springtime books. So normally I like to read these in March. Um, into April as like spring training for baseball is going on but they are great reads year-round even when baseball is not being played so let's just get right on into it so my number five favorite baseball book is Steinbrenner the last lion of baseball it's by Bill Madden I actually just read this a couple like last month I think I'll, I'll leave a link I talked I'm pretty sure I just read this in July and I am a big Yankees fan by for no reason. Like, I'm not from New York. I've never been there. Um, but I love the Yankees. And so, um, if you don't know, Steinbrenner was the owner of the Yankees for like 30 plus years, maybe going on to 40. Um, and he is the longest owning runner. He's passed away since then. He passed away in whenever the year this book was published. So maybe like 2010 or 2015 or something. Um, so this book, it Bill Madden was the baseball reporter for the Daily Post, I believe, a New York daily newspaper. And so he relied a lot on his 30 plus years of covering the Yankees and covering Steinbrenner to write this book. And Steinbrenner is a very outspoken, he's a very dramatic guy, like he would often get in the newspapers like talking bad about players of of his own team like if they weren't performing well he would threaten them in the newspapers to be fired not to like be killed or anything um so this book really goes over when he bought the Yankees all the way up um to the publication date when he got sickly I did like this book, obviously, if it's one of my top fives. The only thing I didn't like is this doesn't get into his personal life. It's strictly covering baseball almost from a newspaper way where it just kind of rehashed what he had been in the newspaper. So if you want to know more about his personal life, this isn't the book for you. Like, it barely talks about his wife and kids at all. Um, and not his childhood hardly at all either. So, um, but it was good. It, it, I don't think this would be like a good, if this is your first baseball book ever read, I would not choose this one. I think there's more engaging ones, but this is definitely a good one, especially if you're a Yankees fan. Um, so my number four top favorite baseball book is going to be a little bit different. It is called Mint Condition. Um, How Baseball Cards Became an American Obsession. It's by Dave Jamison. So this is about baseball cards. And I read this several years ago. And it sounds really boring, right? This sounds like, who wants to read a book about about baseball cards? Like, that's ridiculous. But it is so engaging. It It tells you the history of baseball cards way back in, like, when they were first coming out, like, in the early 1900s it covers them and it talks about the big um like bubble in like the early 90s when everyone was all about baseball cards and they were thinking that they were going to be worth like tens of thousands of dollars and then how it's kind of busted since then and now they're hardly worth anything um so this is a great book for like a kind of a random topic it's written really well um I just really liked it. There's like pictures in it of old baseball cards and things. It's really good and it it can I think it's a great example of nonfiction about really obscure things that like this could have easily been super boring and you know because it's about baseball cards, but it was very good. I would definitely recommend this book. Um probably again not if you have zero interest in baseball and baseball cards obviously don't read this but um I think if you're like slightly into it this would be like a good Christmas gift for dads if like your dad's kind of into baseball I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that for my dad I'm gonna maybe I'll re-gift him this I'm not going well I might who knows so the third book that I'm going to mention I think would be a great intro to baseball books if you don't know hardly anything about baseball this would be great if you do know a lot about baseball it would also be really good 
Um, but it would definitely be a good intro book. And it is called The Baseball Codes, Beanballs, Sign Stealing, and Bench Clearing Brawls. It's by Jason Turbo. And this really tells all the drama behind baseball about why people love it so much is that there are these codes and there are these ongoing storylines and these ongoing feuds. Um, for example, there's a feud between the Yankees and the Kansas City Royals that comes from like a game in the 80s that had to do with how far the pine tar on a bat went. It's like crazy. And that was in the 80s, so 30 years now they're still rivals and part of it is because of that i mean there's other reasons why but part of it so this really tells the drama behind it and it kind of helps explain um so like when a pitcher like bean balls or when a pitcher hits a a batter like with the ball and um and it like there's a lot of drama between that because if say the yankees hit the royals batter you can guarantee when the royals come up to pitch that they're going to hit a yankees batter it's like you have to. Um, so this is a really great book about kind of the drama of um, of baseball. And to, it'd be a good intro book. Like if, if you don't know hardly anything about it but you're kind of interested, this would be a good book for it. My number two baseball book is a book that got me into baseball books. I'm pretty sure this was it. And this is why I'm a Yankees fan. And it is called The Yankee Years by Joe Torre. Joe Torre is a baseball player, but he was also manager from the Yankees under Steinbrenner from 1996 to like mid 2000s I'm not real exact sure um but he was the manager with um people like Derek Jeter, A-Rod, um when Randy Johnson played for the Yankees like big name people that that you'll know about um and so this book tells all about when he was the manager of the Yankees and it kind of gives behind the store like behind the scenes details about what it was like to work with Steinbrenner and what it was like to work with these big name players and to manage a team like the Yankees that is obviously um like has such a legacy that there was a lot of pressure to manage this team this is rather a dense book so again I probably wouldn't recommend this to be an intro book it was my intro book so I guess maybe it'll work out but um it's like 500 pages it's very it's like a lot um but it's really interesting especially because during these years was when the Yankees were like at their best um they won the world series like I don't know like three or four times during that period including like a period where they won it like years in a row um so I would really recommend this book it is I it is good, you know, maybe, like, pace yourself. This would also be, like, a good Christmas gift or something, too. Um, and my number one baseball book is probably no surprise. You probably, if you know anything about baseball books, you probably knew that I was going to mention this. And it is Moneyball by Michael Lewis. So this is was made into a movie with Brad Pitt. Um, but the movie only covers, like, a very small chunk of the book. So this is about the economics of baseball, and it talks a lot about how really rich teams like the Yankees can spend like $200 million a year on salaries for their players because they have that fan base. They have the money from the owner. They have the money from um, all the licensing on all the merchandise of um, broadcasting their, um, like, um games I forgot the word games what broadcasting their games like they have all those rights whereas um Moneyball focuses on the Oakland A's which doesn't have a strong base like they have they don't have the same money to spend yearly on salaries um I forget the actual amount of money that they could spend a year I mean it's been a while since I've read this but it could be maybe like 50 million so when you have a when you have a team that's paying 50 million dollars and a team that's paying 200 million dollars you know you would think that the 200 million dollar team the Yankees could then have all the best players that they would just dominate while someone who couldn't afford as much like the A's you know would would not be as good so this focuses on um it really focuses on like uh this theory that you could use stats and use different things to find undervalued players. 
so players that can get runs um, and get like on base um, that maybe aren't like the Derek Jeters or things like that. They're undervalued. So, um, and this, the way, if you've never re- read a Michael Lewis book, what he does is he takes a very broad topic, so in this case, the economics of baseball, and he focuses on one individual to kind of tell that tale, and in this case, it's Billy Bean, who was the general manager of the Oakland A's, so he uses Billy Bean and the Oakland A's to really, like, flesh out the topics that he's talking about, um, so anyway, I would really recommend this. And I would recommend, don't get daunted. It is a lot talking about statistics and economics and things like that, that people, with math, people find it often scary, like, even to think about what they're talking about. But if you just, like, calmly read this, like, you'll be fine. You don't need to have, like, a degree in econ to understand this book. It's very good. It's, like, it's one of my favorite nonfiction books ever. It's kind of like the baseline that Michael Lewis is writing is kind of the baseline for nonfiction that people use to kind of talk about other books. It is so good. If you're slightly into baseball, you've probably already read it. But if you haven't, you need to because people refer to this all the time. Moneyball has now become like it's like a noun, like its own thing. People will reference Moneyball and they will, and it'll be like this whole idea of. Um, like less monetary teams being able to make a really good team and the undervalued players and overvalued players as well. So it's really good. Definitely recommend it. Anyway, those are my top five baseball books. You guys have a couple more months before baseball season is over if you want to read any of these or really they're good any year. Um, so yeah, please subscribe and leave me a comment on, have you read any of these books? What's like a really particular genre that you like? Like, I really like baseball. Is there any like really narrowed in genre that you really like? And, um, I think that's always fun to hear what people are super interested in. Um, so thank you for watching. Bye.